pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I have a proclamation. Um, I'm actually going to come up there. Okay. Whereas Carney Bank was founded on April 16, 1884, as a bank to help local neighbors and businesses succeed. And whereas Carney Bank was originally founded in Arlington, New Jersey, and currently has over $8 billion in assets and presents 43 communities. And whereas Carney Bank opened a branch in Milltown in 1989, and whereas Carney Bank remains focused on personalized attention helpful banking services, and commitment to bring a good neighbor. Now, therefore, I, Mayor George Murray, along with the Borough Council of Milltown, do hereby proclaim April 16, 2024, as Kearney Bank 140th anniversary celebration in, in the Borough of Milltown and urge all citizens to join me in congratulating Carney Bank on her 140th anniversary. Now is the time for public comments limited to the resolutions listed on the agenda. If you wish to speak, please step up to the microphone and say your name and address for the record. Seeing no comments, this portion of the meeting is closed to the public. Uh, the following minutes on the agenda for acceptance. February 26, 2024, executive session. March 25, 2024, regular meeting. Are there any comments or corrections? Um, just wondering if we can adopt these individually. I cannot vote on the 25th as I was not present. Okay. Anything else? I just have a small question. So the twenty, the twenty-sixth minute says that there are no minutes to be provided for the portion of the executive session. So there's just never going to be any minutes provided, or is that something that's coming? So, uh, Mr. Carr, did you add during that portion? Um, did you take minutes, or do we have anything to work off? Okay, so we may not have anything on that. Uh, in light of the nature of how that occurred. Okay. You said February 26th, right? This is the minutes? Bill? 12th. February 12th? Okay. You said February 12th, right? Sorry. 12th. Yeah. 12th, 12th executive session. I've got the copy that says It's 26th. February 26th. No, no, but he's talking about the 12th that was never created. Right? No? The, there was minutes for the 12th and they were approved. The executive session? Mm -hmm. okay. These, okay. These, the 26th is the one that don't have minutes for the last portion of that meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to accept the minutes as typed for February 26th? Motion to, motion to accept the minutes of February 26th. Second. Uh, motion by Councilman Collins, seconded by Councilman Potter. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to accept the minutes as typed for March 25th, 2024, regular meeting? So moved. 
Um, all in favor? We need a second. 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 Okay, I have it. Uh, Councilman Potter and uh, Councilman uh, Collins second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. Will the clerk please read ordinance 24 Dash 1534 by title only. Ordinance renaming Lanny Lane to Paul W. Core Lane in Milltown, New Jersey. Does the council have any questions or comments? Where is Laney Lane? Oh, off South Brook Drive. Lanny Lane. Well, that's that little dead end no house. Right. Now. So it doesn't affect the residents. <clears throat> Okay, can I have a we motion and a second? So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Councilman Potter, seconded by Councilman Collins. Um, can I have a roll call? Council President Revolinsky. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Menko. Aye. Councilman Poznansky. Aye. Councilman Potter. Aye. Councilman Zambrano. Aye. A public hearing on this ordinance will take place on April 29th at 7 p.m. Council Chambers. Um, authorized payment of municipal obligation. Will the clerk please read resolution by title? Resolution 2024-119, authorizing the payment of bills, claims, and statements against the borough of Milltown in the total amount of You've heard the reading of this resolution to what's your pleasure. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that the bill this be approved this type. Second. Uh, motion by Councilman Potter, second by Council President Revolinsky. Um, can the clerk please call roll? Is there any discussion? No. Discussion? You having a discussion? Yeah. yeah. I, I had a question for Fred. I don't know if you know the answer, Fred. You got true green on land care, land, lawn care on page 10. You know, if that's work that has already been done, are they going to do more work? I'll have to get that answered for you okay. and the council tomorrow. Okay, thanks, Fred. Thanks. Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? I have that, but I remember back up. Council President Revolinsky. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Manko. Aye. Councilman Poznanski. Aye. Councilman Potter. Aye. Councilman Zambrana. Aye. A consent resolution has been prepared for resolutions listed on the agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine in nature and having been reviewed by Borough Council will be enacted in one motion. Any items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any council members. And if so, removed. We will, will be treated in a separate manner. Any items requiring expenditure are supported by certification of funds. If any member of the council wants any resolution acted upon individually, please give me the resolution number and it will be pulled from the consent resolution. I'd like to pull one. Resolution 2024-128. Um, for clarification, I agree with it, but I'm just, I have questions. I just want uh, clarification. I can start. Well, wait, no, um, we got, got not yet. He's got to pull it. He's got to pull it. Got to pull it. It's okay. Okay. Uh, will the clerk please read consent agenda resolution? Whereas pursuant to the rules of council, the council may establish a consent agenda for any regular or special meetings upon certain conditions. And whereas each of the following resolutions to be presented before the borough council at its April 8th, 2024 regular meeting, appear to have the unanimous approval of all members of the Borough Council, resolutions 2024-121 through 2024-127. Now therefore be it resolved by the Borough Council of the Borough of Milltown that each of the above listed resolution be approved and adopted by the Borough Council with the same legal effect as though each were read in its entirety at the April 8th, 2024 regular meeting and adopted by separate vote. Yeah. You have heard the reading of this current res consent resolution. What's your pleasure? Move that this resolution be adopted. Second. 
Motion made by Council President Revlinsky, seconded by Councilman Potter. Uh, any discussion? Will the clerk uh, roll call? Please read the roll call. Council President Revolinski. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Manko. Aye. Councilman Poznanski. Aye. Councilman Potter. Aye. Councilman Zambrana. Aye. Will the clerk please read resolution 24-128 by title? Resolution 2024-128 authorizing personnel action senior account clerk. What is the pleasure of council? Move that this resolution be adopted and second. We have a uh, motion by Council President Revolinski, seconded by Councilman Potter. And any discussion? Uh, like I said, I, I want clarification. I, I think the woman is well qualified, but I have just questions because I'm, I'm new at this. Um, it was a union job, then it was not, and it's a union job again. Uh, I'd like to know if someone can explain why it was changed and on whose advisement. Changed to a union, back to a union position, or, yeah. or from a union it's, position to none? Well, wasn't it, it was a union position, then it wasn't, now it is again. Correct. But well, I'm just questioning So why. the previous employee we had was non-union, and that was in order to accommodate a particular pay scale. Okay. And uh, that, that pay scale exceeded the level that would be allowed or permitted according to the current union agreement. Okay. So the desire is to have all of our employees be within the same union, and therefore so we, we interviewed Ms. Santos and made that point clear to her, and we showed that what the pay scale was for that position, and uh, we're thankful that, uh, that she responded positively to, to our offer. Well, it's a needed position. So anything that I'm bringing up is not going against her or, or the idea. It's just, like I said, I'm new here, and I just like to know things so I can go forward in the future understanding. Um, I, I saw as far as um, vacation days and personal days and sick days, and it amounts, it's, uh, again, I, I don't know how you work things out, but, but it's, it's a fair amount. And uh, what, I, what I'd like to know is would there be a deputy at some point, an assistant, or would you have cross-training something? Because, I mean, it's a matter of like vacation or something. It's a needed position. So who would fill that gap when she's not there? It's, um, so we, our goal is to have an assistant, another person in that office who would be the payroll clerk. Uh, we have received a couple of resumes for that already. Um, I don't recall that we had a few interviews for the, the payroll clerk as well. Um, have we made any motion on that yet? I don't know if we had anybody yet. The person that we had. Oh, that's right. That, um, we sure. did call one person in for, um, yep. I apologize. We called one person in for an interview. Um, they showed up and left abruptly before the interview even started. Okay. Um, and, uh, and we haven't had anyone else come in yet, but there would be another person. There were two in the office before, and the goal is to have two there again. I, I just have one more thing. Um, we've had Supply Clooney accountants working since Kristen left, which is very expensive for the taxpayers, and I believe should have been avoided. Um, and I bring this up because I was voted to, to look after the taxpayers, and that's what I feel like I'm doing here. And that's all I have to say on that. Could, uh, could I ask how many how many candidates we actually interviewed for this position before um, settling on this candidate? Were there just two? How many, how many resumes did we get? Fred, do you recall how many resumes we had for this position? For the so senior number, if you remember, you started off as the executive assistant billing clerk. You segued into the senior account clerk position, um, interviewed <clears throat> the same person again for the account clerk, the billing clerk. I believe there are eight, I mean, 11, outstanding uh, 11 outstanding resumes that the personnel committee should have um, for, for the payroll clerk person, uh, depending on what the personnel committee decides it previously was payroll payroll clerk personnel assistant um, personnel committee to answer the question is 
is uh, stuck with just a payroll clerk, um, but have not interviewed anybody from what I understand other than initially some months ago. Now my question is, for this, for this position that we're approving tonight, the senior account clerk, do Correct. I have that right? The senior account clerk. How many, how many resumes did we receive, and how many people did, of those resumes, how many people did we interview, actually interview? I'd have to defer that to the personnel committee since I wasn't involved in any of that. I believe this was the only candidate that had Edmund's experience, and that's why we brought her in. That's, she was the only qualified one for the position. Only qualified person. Out of all so the resumes we got. How many resumes did we get, Mr. Potter, approximately? I, off the top of my head, I don't know, but there were, there were quite a few. Five, six? Could be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Council President Revolinsky. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Manko. Aye. Councilman Poznanski. Aye. Councilman Potter. Aye. Councilman Zambrana. Aye. Reports from elected officials. Council President Revolinsky. Uh, short report. The search continues as a result of uh, the last council meeting. Um, shooting down the agreement with North Brunswick for the shared services. The CFO had submitted their resignation and we are now back at it again for uh, another CFO search. Um, I've asked our business administrator to reach out to the other candidates who were certified municipal chief finance officers and see if they were still available as well as to post the position once again as available. Uh, Ford Avenue Redevelopment Agency will be meeting on Wednesday the 10th uh, to discuss uh, the resumes received for personnel for the uh, executive director position. And as for planning board, there was a meeting last week and I believe uh, Councilman Potter attended that if he wouldn't mind sending it in. Uh, I was actually away on vacation. So at that meeting, um there wasn't anything, I believe, that was, uh, Monica, refresh my memory, but there was nothing on the, the was there anything on the uh, docket? No, there was really nothing on there. Christopher Street application uh, was, is still, is, we're waiting for that. That might be in May, it may not be, but if it is going to come before us again, the hearing is starting um, from the beginning, so the applicant's attorney was advised to re-notice uh, all the residents that need to be noticed. So as far as Christopher Street, that's, that and then I anything else? There was an executive session, but I wasn't yeah. privy to that. We were privy to that. So. And nobody else. Nobody is. <laughs> and that was all, Council President. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman Collins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Milltown Electric Utility broken pole with main primary feeder was replaced on the New Jersey Turnpike property by the department of members. Compromised pole was replaced on Clay Street and a new transformer was set in. The job is in progress and will be completed in April. A broken Verizon pole was replaced on Cottage Avenue and the department members completed the wire transfer. A new electric service was installed at a commercial location on North Main Street. Roughly 10 street lights were repaired and replaced. Line clearance was performed on Albert Avenue and Southbrook Drive to prevent outages, tree trimming was performed at the Little League field, tree trimming was performed on a house at Norton Main Street with a broken wire was discovered and repairs were made. The department worked with the billing office to resolve billing issues, a meter was replaced and an old meter will be evaluated. Plans are in place to complete some substation repairs and maintenance. Yeah, I got another one here. A broken pole with a primary feeder, oh that's the uh, same thing. Uh, oh, oh, yep. Give me two of them, sorry. The water and utilities, monitoring of the pump station occurred on a regular schedule. The new sewer was installed on West Foshe Avenue from Main Street to Albert Avenue. Repairs and maintenance are being, currently being done at the Church Street pump station. Work orders are performed on a daily basis. And that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Collins. Councilman Manko. Okay. Uh, so, to start with REC, uh, registration will be opening in mid-April for the Albert Avenue Summer Camp and the Borough Pool. The spring registration for any of the spring programs are closed. 
Uh, and those programs will also begin in mid-April. Um, the rec department also is, uh, we're working on, uh, beginning to work on Albert F. Park in DPW, uh, but the rec department also uh, will be renting out parks and the pavilions. So we're trying to, trying to cultivate that. If you'd like to book something, uh, you can do that on Community Pass as well. Um, they have received plenty of applications for summer employment. Uh, they are starting to contact uh, people for all of those positions. Over the next month, they uh, should be making some good plans on that, but you can still apply. Uh, Milltown Rec will be starting an adult co-ed softball league, and registration for that will open on April 15th. There will be a flyer with some more information as well. Uh, and they are, I don't have a list yet, but I know they're planning some things for uh, the town's Earth Day. Uh, additional to that, uh, the library uh, always has some great events going. Uh, there are, there's a board meeting tomorrow night at 6.30. That board meeting is always open to the public. Uh, there is, uh, I'll go quickly on them, but 4.10, there's after school origami. 4.11, an after school movie. Uh, Blanca, crochet for beginners is on 4:13, and 4:16 there is a uh, kind of a uh, whole session about lighthouses of New Jersey. Uh, they offer tween crafts on 4:17, after school Jeopardy on 4:18, reading to a pooch on 4:20, uh, and then a situational awareness and firearms uh, learning on 4:22, which is just useful for adults and kids. Uh, always good stuff to know. Uh, 423, they examine the New Jersey court system and civil rights. Uh, 424, after school bingo. 427, the Lego club. And then 429, Mickey Mouse and friends bingo. Uh, the library will have a table on Earth Day on 420. Uh, the library staff also wishes everyone uh, celebrating a happy Passover. Additional to that, a couple things that are uh, just not broadcasted, but I ended up in the library often enough, thankfully. Um, they've got a uh, they got a jigsaw puzzle table that is a take one, leave one, which just kind of an interesting thing. Um, I put them together, and then what do you do with this thing? So it's nice the way you can circulate them back. Um, just a couple of really always have good things going there, there today. Um, interestingly, there was a Minecraft teaching, uh, Minecraft being a video game for Anyone who doesn't know, which you probably do by now. Uh, and my daughter was there for two hours, practically had to drag all the kids out. Uh, had a good time. A lot of good stuff there. And a lot of uh, bigger things and smaller things. But the library is uh, always doing its part to be, to be a central part of Milltown. And it's a really great service being across from JK. So that, uh, I think, wraps me up. Thank you. Councilman Ponsansky. Sure. I'm going to start off with the Senior Center. Thursday, April 11th, bus trip to Cranberry Museum. The bus will leave at 9.30. Tuesday, April 16th, 1.30, question and answer with Kelly Boyd, Milltown Recreation Director. Tuesday, April 23rd, 9.15, uh, bus trip to New Dover Flea Market in Edison. Monday, April 29th, bus trip to the Shrimp Box at Point Pleasant. The bus will leave at 10.45. And the VNA nurse will be here April 16th from 12.30 to 3.00. Sign up is required. Um, for the DPW report, street sweeping has taken place and is ongoing to meet DEP regulations. Quarterly catch basin and outfall pipe cleaning has taken place to meet the DEP stormwater regulations. Staff continue to address any potholes that need to be repaired. Please report, report or concern feature on the borough webpage to report any new potholes. Cleanup of bamboo, down trees, and vegetation at the Schwindemann cabin continues. They've started to paint the bathroom floors at Albert Avenue Park, added and spread infield mix at all baseball and softball fields. We removed low-hanging branches around the ball field at Borough Park. And our next, the next recycling date is April 18th. Um, as far as the, uh, the Schwinman property, we're waiting for the architect's report on the viability of the cabin. I'm also looking into um, cabins that could be ADA compliant for the site. And the site is being cleared by the DPW, as I, I uh, just said, as time permits. And it looks very nice. And um, please take a look if you can. It's, it, it gets uh, cleared um, daily when they, when they can. And it looks great in there. Um, 
and Historic Preservation Committee with uh, Randy Ruth. Um, they gave a presentation on commissions, Weak and Strong Commission, and uh, this month he'll be coming to the council to uh, discuss the, the different commissions. And um, I'd just like to say also, I, I applaud uh, Randy Ruth and Barbara Wright for their determination to make and keep uh, Milltown a beautiful place to live and be proud of. Unfortunately, we have the elephant in the room, the disgrace of Ford Avenue that has plagued the town for generations. Uh, we have a person who thumbs his nose at our little town, giving us a black eye. And shame on him for disrespecting all of us who call Milltown home. And I'm done. Thank you. Councilman Potter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. From the Milltown Police Department, for the month of March, police responded to 1,251 calls for service. Regarding accommodations, the Milltown Police Department and Borough Council would like to thank and, gra and congratulate Officer Michael McCabe, Officer Nicholas Espinosa, and Public Safety Communicator Kate Newman for their excellence in service to the department and the community. On March 12, 2024, Officers Michael McCabe and Nicholas Espinosa responded to the Mill Condominium Complex for the report of an infant actively choking. Both officers responded to the address and upon their arrival, they provided life-saving care that successfully dislodged the blockage that was preventing the infant from breathing. Both officers were co uh, commended for their professionalism, teamwork, and dedication to duty. Public safety telecommunicator Kate Newman was commended for her work on revamping our emergency business contact notification system. While also completing her regular duties, PST Newman volunteered to revamp an important system within the communications center. After weeks of work and countless hours spent, our ability to contact business owners during a time of emergency has been brought up to date. PSC Newman was commended for her professionalism, attention to detail, and dedication to the community. In response to complaints of rush hour aggravated driving at North Main Street and Milltown Road, Milltown police officers, along with officers from the North Brunswick Police Traffic Division, are working together to make our roads safer. The two departments are strictly enforcing speed limits and complaints of vehicles cutting off vehicles when entering Milltown at our border with North Brunswick Township. The Milltown Police Department needs school crossing guards. This is a part-time position with very flexible hours. Applications can be found on the borough website. For more information, please contact Lieutenant Carmen DiLorenzo. And the Milltown PBA Local 338 is currently conducting their 2024 annual fund drive. Keep an eye out for donation letters that went out in the mail to every resident and business, and please support our officers. For the Milltown Fire Department, for the month of March, the fire department responded to 19 fire calls. The department welcomes back firefighter Brian Kozak to full active duty. Thank you to everyone who came out to support the annual flower sale. It was a success. Members are needed. Any candidate interested in joining the Milltown Fire Department are encouraged to stop by the firehouse on Monday nights at 6.30 or email joinmilltownfire at gmail.com. And the Milltown Fire Department mourns the passing of ex-fire chief Jack Shannabrook, who was a pillar of engine company and respected leader of our community. For the Milltown Rescue Squad, for the month of February, there were a total of 84 calls that the Rescue Squad responded to. The Rescue Squad's 2024 fund drive has begun. Keep an eye out for their mailer and please consider donating to support their organization. The Rescue Squad's annual open house will be on Sunday, May 19th from noon to four. This is a family friendly event and all are welcome. Anyone interested in applying to join the Rescue Squad should visit their open house or email recruitment at milltownrescuesquad.org. From the Public Safety Committee, no updates, no new updates. And finally, from the Milltown Fourth of July Committee, please come out to DuSalle's in Milltown on April 17th and 18th for a dine to donate. A portion of every sale, dine-in, takeout, or delivery on those two days will go towards funding the Milltown Fourth of July celebration. And finally, tickets are on sale now for the Milltown Fourth of July Organization Celebrity Bartender event at the Milltown American Legion Post 25 on April 20th. Tickets can be purchased online via the Milltown Fourth of July website and or Facebook page and are available in the following locations, Mike's Country Market, Maria's, Milltown Convenience, and Bagel Express. And Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you. Councilman Zimbrano. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, the environmental committee met, met on uh, Wednesday the 27th and uh, that meeting actually was in person. Uh, there, was, there was much talk uh, over the last half of uh, last year and the beginning of this year about getting together at least once or twice in person. So on the 27th that happened, the first part of the meeting uh, was, you know, just uh, uh, more of a planning meeting for Earth Day. Lots of Earth Day things that are being planned by the committee. And then the second half was actually uh, a Zoom meeting for anybody who couldn't actually make it down to us. Uh, so we put on the big TV in the room and um, everybody joined in. Um, Board of Health was on Tuesday the 26th. Uh, it was at 6.30 p.m. start, start time. Um, the, uh, that uh, committee met for the first time this year, so that, that, uh, that uh, meeting actually was the reorg, and um, everyone met and, and got to know uh, all of the new members of the, uh, of the committee. And revitalization uh, committee will be meeting tomorrow uh, with a start time of 8 p.m. That will be via Zoom. Um, and then the HRC committee was rescheduled to May 7th uh, for lack of a quorum, and uh, that's probably my fault. Uh, because you should never um, schedule something during spring break. Um, <laughs> so Tuesday, May 7th uh, at uh, 7 p.m., we'll be in the, in the big room in the back uh, for the HRC where we'll meet for the first time this year. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, my report, uh, we haven't had a personnel committee meeting in a couple of weeks. We're going to have one before next council meeting, and I'll have an update then. Uh, Borough Attorney, Peter Daniello. No report tonight, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Borough Clerk, Madam Carlando. Uh, I have a couple things. Uh, election Day, one big announcement. For the 2024 primary and general election, there is a polling location change for two of our districts. District 1 and District 4, who previously voted at Joyce Kilmer School, will now be here at Borough Hall for voting for primary and general election. Postcards are going to be mailed to everybody who is affected by this. I'm also sending the message to Russ to put it on our cable television. It is on the clerk's website, and I will say it every single meeting until we get to primary day. So that's districts one and four, who previously voted at Joyce Kilmer, will now be voting here at Borough Hall. Uh, with the anticipated large voter turnout, with it being a presidential election, uh, with some previous issues of people trying to get into the school and lack of access to parking. We felt it was just safer for everybody and better access to move at least some of our voters here. Uh, let's see, what else do I have for Excuse you? Excuse me, uh, sorry, Monica, but uh, one and four or one through four? One and four. So two and three will remain we'll at Joyce Kilmer. still be at Joyce Kilmer, yes. I'm yes. sorry, Monica, the, where, where's that gonna be at? Right here? Right here in Council right, Chambers, Council Chambers? Yes. Okay. Yes, we, uh, we tried to move all four districts, but uh, the county board of election commissioners were not a big fan of that. So the compromise was to move uh, at least half of it to relieve some of the foot traffic, especially with it being a presidential year. Um, I spoke with Chief Johnson about it too. Uh, to, he thought it was a good idea as well, just for safety reasons, for parking reasons. And we'll see how it goes this year and uh, take it from there. Do you think we could get a crossing guard up? Because a lot of people in District 4, you know, used to walk there. Do you think we could get a crossing guard up on Main Street till you know, 8 o'clock or something? For, on, on uh, you're talking about Election Day to yes, help cross day. people? Yeah, I mean, that, that's something I'll write down and we'll, we can take a look at that for safety. I'll speak to the chief about it as well. Uh, somebody in the police department do it for us. I'm just, I'm just surprised because four is the district in which the school exactly. resides. That it yeah. would be one and four. It seems unusual, but thank you for clarifying. Yep. April 10th uh, is the deadline to file a change of party affiliation. I have forms in the clerk's office if you need that. May 14th is the deadline to register to vote. I also have those forms in my office. May 28th is the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot also in my office. Early voting will be May 29th through June 2nd. Tuesday, June 4th is primary election day. As I always say, poll workers are needed. You do receive paid training. It's $300 for a full day, $150 for a half day. Uh, I currently do have exactly the amount I need for a primary day, but I'm always looking for backup. I'm always looking for people to train. So we have them for the general election. Sometimes people wake up sick the morning of, and I like to have uh, a roster that I can call on. If you're interested in being a poll worker, you can call our office, 732-828-2100, extension 181. You can email me. You can also go to the clerk's website, uh, click on elections, and there's a form that you can fill out and email to me with your information. 
Uh, you'll probably notice when you, thank you to Councilman Zambrano for pointing this out, the electronic board outside seems to be having some issues. I contacted um, the people who run it and there's a server issue, so it's going to be getting reset and hopefully uh, it will be working better tomorrow. But it has been updated, it's just not updating out there. Uh, and then finally, uh, our secretary in our office, Kathy Beardsley, is retiring at the end of the month. Um, super sad to see her go, so make sure you stop in and say hello to her uh, before the end of the month, and hopefully we will uh, be able to hire a replacement for her soon because we are very busy in that office. And that concludes my report. Does any member of council have any old business to bring before council? Mayor, if I may. Uh, council President Revelinsky, we sent an email out early this morning regarding the part-time CFO want ad is it the wish that we advertise you said it, you said you know we need to go out but i didn't get a, like from the mayor or from councilman potter an agreement i just want to make sure that we want to go out and advertise for a part-timer yes thank you sir and then i did reach out to the two rem remaining applicants who s appeared to have municipal cfo uh credentials uh but they have not responded back thank you Okay, does any, uh, new business. Does any member of council have any new business to bring before council? Yep. Okay, open to the public. The public comment portion of this meeting is to allow the public to bring to the council's attention their comments or concerns. The council will respect the public's time by refraining from any comments until the speaker is finished. It should be further noted that this public comment portion of the meeting is not structured as a question and answer session. Please state your name and address for the record when coming to the podium. Hello, uh, Debbie Miller, 92 Ford Avenue. Just want to let you know the library gave out 500 solar eclipse glasses. And if anybody is interested in recycling them, we'll take them back and have them sent to Latin America for their eclipse in October 2024. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I got my glasses uh, today from the library right before they got, I guess right before they got rid of all of them. Um, great service by the library. My name is Patricia Payne. I live at 2 Karina Drive uh, in Milltown. Um, mayor, council, men. <laughs> um, so, uh, Mr. Revolinsky, I'd love to answer your question about the planning board. Mr. Uh, Potter was there just as a member of the audience, right? As you know that he's not a member of the planning board, but I am. Um, and so, interestingly enough, um, we haven't been able to do business because um, the planning board just recently appointed, I'm sure as you know, an attorney, right? So uh, we've been in a holding pattern uh, for months. Um, and also another interesting item, um, and certainly, you know, I understand with the transition of party, right, during the most recent election, um, appointments to the planning board were done incorrectly. So uh, I inquired about that. Um, and again, as you know, <laughs> members of the planning board are appointed first as an alternate ordinarily, you know, because there's a big learning curve. There's a lot to know being a member of the planning board. So I spent an entire year, right, learning as best I can from members on the board, from members of council, from members of the public, and other people that participate. And historically, the way that these appointments have been made, because that alternate serves in a training kind of period, right, in a learning period, then they move into vacancies that are created, right, on the board. That's not what happened. There, there were wives of council members appointed. There were friends of council appointed. Um, you know, and so, um, Am I sour grapes? <laughs> no, I understand how the political process works, 
right? But what I'm seeing in sitting in the audience today and what I've been watching, and I watch the meetings regularly, and based on my participation, you know, my service to the community, it's not working, right? So um, Mr. Potter gets asked a direct question. Who applied for the position? You should be able to answer that. Um, so the hiring process, uh, I'm not understanding as a resident, and I'm not the only one that's not understanding what the difficulties are, um, why we don't have a CFO, why we don't have a budget. Other towns have presented their budget to the community. We, so I'm also assuming that without a CFO, you expect me to pay my taxes on time, right? My quarterly taxes are due on May 1st. Do I get an extension because we don't have a budget? No, there's an expectation that we'll all pay our taxes. I don't know that that's really fair. So I want to know, and I want to know because we're all talking about this in town, Mr. Mayor, what is your personnel committee doing? Like, what is the problem? Why, 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 are, why do we not have a budget in place? I mean, that's your primary role, right? Your primary role is to present a budget, budget to the taxpayers, right, so that we can take a look at that. That's your responsibility as elected officials. And, and, and I am disappointed, and many of the residents are disappointed that you are not performing the function for which you were elected to, the, the, that you are supposed to serve your constituents, whether I voted for you or not. It is your responsibility to present a budget. It is your responsibility to get a CFO. It is your responsibility to have a planning board attorney in place so we can do business. And you're failing at your responsibility. Could I say something? I, 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 I was spent four years on the planning board. I never heard what that idea you had where you serve as an alternate before you go on the planning board. I can tell you that's not the truth. I mean, I, I'm, I'm certain that you're not calling me a liar, Mr. Collins. Is that correct? No. What do you have? That I'm certain that you're not calling me a liar. That's correct. Is that correct? You're missing. So then, what's your question? My question is, where did you get that information? Well, so do you know how the planning board works? Where did you get the information? Do you know how the planning board works? Yeah, I served four years on it. Okay. So, so, you're, and so, are you suggesting no, that know. alternates didn't move? Is that what you're suggesting? Are you suggesting that alternates can move into vacancies? Alternates can move into vacancies, but alternates are not obligated to move into vacancies. Well, correct, but I'm just saying historically that was the practice until That's this administration was elected. Mr. 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 Corbett served on the zoning board for many, many years and as an alternate and was never appointed there. So it's sometimes it's practice, sometimes it's not. It's not mandated. So you can just do whatever you want. That's it, correct. You can do whatever you want. That's correct. That's part of get, being elected and serving your constituents. Exactly. You can make whatever appointments you want, appoint whoever you want, at the cost of the planning board's working. Right? The planning board hasn't done business for the last four months. There's something wrong there. And it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility, Mr. Mayor. Council comments, does is anyone on the council? We need to like close to the public portion. We'd like to close the public portion uh, of the meeting. Is there anybody on council that would like to bring up anything at this time? I'd just like to make a comment. Um, I just want to reiterate what, what um, Councilman Potter brought up. I, I'd like to thank um, Officers McCabe and Espinosa for their actions in saving the precious life of a child. That's all I want to say. I'd like to thank the council for voting for the name change in street of uh, Paul Core, our uh, World War II veteran. I'd also like to know, is there a policy, too, about the council notes? Because I went to pick up my council notes and they, uh, a quarter to four, and somebody said, you're not allowed to pick them up until they get approved. Is there some new policy that I should be aware of? I didn't understand what you just said. What? I went to pick up my council notes and they said, you can't get it till it's approved, but you weren't there. Oh, oh, in your package. oh, the package. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is there some new policy or something? 
The agenda packets are available after, on Friday after close of business at the request of the oh. mayor. Oh, what was it? Well, why What's is it? that? Uh, the mayor said he wants them out on Friday, so they go out on Friday. Oh. That's, well, what, what, is, that a, is that a standard thing? No, sir. It's, well, what it's did it change? Place. The mayor chose that they go out on Friday. That's what changed. Mr. They Mr. used Mayor, to go out on Thursday, change? now they go out on Friday. Yeah, what did it change? That they were always going out on Friday, and then um, somebody requested they go out on Thursday, but then there was some changes, and then everybody started to have issues about the changes, so I said just hold it until Friday. Well, they always went out on Fridays. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we used to get it, if you went away on the weekend or something, you could pick it up at 11.30, 12 o'clock, but now it's like, you know. But when did they go out on Friday previously? Well, this year. They were available Every on year. Friday. This year, this year. Yeah, not, they went not the out previous four days. years. They didn't go out at previous, night. Afternoon. I don't know when they're... Not changing. the previous four years, no. Just this year. Because you could... Been well, here a while. So, <laughs> packet went out. Packet was available on a Thursday afternoon if you got lucky. But you always had it by the end of day on Thursday. Now yeah, but it's, it was, now it was it's always out on Friday. Friday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the afternoon by 12 o'clock. Shouldn't it be available sooner rather than later? Exactly, so you could have more time to look at it, not we, less. Well, exactly, we, Phil. You're working. I mean, that's what I'm saying. We, we did have these discussions. Of the first few agendas went through multiple revisions as we were trying to fill vacancies. And instead of sending out multiple revisions and saying, change the packet, change the packet, we agreed that it would be best to just have it go out once without additional revisions. So it was supposed to go out on Friday. I didn't expect it to be end of the day Friday. Always thought that it would be earlier in the day, but to give us that extra time. Well, because there, there was, was nothing controversial in this one, so why, why did it have to go out as late as it did? Shouldn't should you send an email out and tell us? I mean, I feel like a redheaded stepchild up here sometimes. You know, it's like you go out and you, you do all these things and then you tell me up here. I'm sitting there like, so is that going to be the standard practice, or are we going to change it to Thursday? Because Council, Res Council President Resolinsky, I remember you kept on saying last year you were complaining because they were coming out Friday, didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. well, also, too, that's another reason why um, we could have, you know, missed that vote last time because we didn't have enough time to read. Well, I think the resolution. You, so. Well, let's 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 discuss this because clearly, um, clearly some comments have been made, and I think there's an attempt to portray the efforts of this council. Um, in a bad light. And I want to say this very, very clearly. At the beginning of the year, this council, this body, voted to change courses with our business administrator and our CFO. Not the entire council. Okay. So let's, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Regardless, the council decided to go in a different direction, albeit maybe not all, if that makes you happy. Exactly. Since then, we've had two different CFOs that came on. One left after about a day due to family emergencies. Things happen. The second had some family issues, but also looked at the state of the books and had concerns. The most recent candidate that we had, after requesting interviews and after receiving only a few, I think there was four or five resumes that came in, that were certified uh, chief financial officers for municipalities. We had an agreement in place with North Brunswick. That agreement was $1,250 per month to have access to their chief financial officer to serve as a guide and a mentor to someone who recently passed the exam and was offering to do the work for the borough of Milltown. As a result, of this council's decision at the last council meeting to pull the resolution and vote it down, that CFO resigned. Now, if we didn't think that would happen based on their resume and by the actions of the personnel committee when we interviewed this person and knew very clearly what their requirements were and what their needs were, shame on them because you should have seen it coming. And it was, well, it's not fair because North Brunswick uses our courtroom. Using a courtroom at no fee for two years was a nice neighborly gesture. But we can't go back and try and renegotiate a deal 
after we had agreements amongst the personnel committee to say now North Brunswick should pay us for those previous years. It's not right. It's flat out wrong. And it was after an agreement was reached that North Brunswick approved an agreement that even with the $1,250 per month would have cost us $45,000 a year for a CFO. But your CFO was already we, appointed at the previous meeting. Yes. Right. And knew full well, because you made the comment, I'd like to see this, the agreement with North Brunswick. Yeah, and as and a then, result and then of the this the agreement body, came through. excuse me, the agreement came through. You can wait your turn while I'm speaking. Seventy-five dollars to a CFO. So you, you you're not going to listen, Councilman Zambrano. Then there's together. no point in me discussing this. No problem. So now the search continues for a CFO. Shame on the members who voted it down. It was a good deal for us. It was not. Shame so on those who deal. pushed. Terrible, excuse me. Terrible deal. I shouldn't have to be raising my voice. Anyone else here? Then wait your turn, please. I will wait my turn. Don't raise your voice to anyone else here. Put your hand up. I signed up to do good things for this town. And with my experience and my knowledge, we are doing that. However, when people are acting against the best interests of their town for their own political gain, that's where I draw the line. And I'll end my comments there. Thank you. Councilman, Council President Red Valensky, were you at the last meeting? Were you present at the last meeting? I think you know the answer to that. I'm, I'm just asking. Were you, were you present at the last meeting? If you were here, would you have voted yes? Yes. Would absolutely 100%. Well, then that's the issue right there. Why do you, you were here it? then, Rich? It would have broken the, the uh, uh, Mr. Murray, would you have broken the tie as a yes? So that answers your question. Don't blame the council. Priorities, my friends. Priorities. Pennywise. You knew. Council you knew that was on. You knew that was on the agenda. And Councilman Potter, you, you knew that saw that you saw you the knew that was on the agenda. You should have been here. You could have called in. You could have voted. We wouldn't be in this situation. Councilman Potter. So you please don't blame the rest of council okay. that this didn't happen because, as a head of the finance and head of personnel, you need to take some responsibility as well. And that's all I have to say. I, I, I will remind you. Councilman Potter that you knew very well what that agreement entailed. I never and had no it. issues with I it. I never saw it. I saw the saw email that in that discussion. No, I did not. I saw it that day. You know, I had questions. I'd, I'd, I'd like to be recognized for one thing here, please. Say. Thank you. I'd like to be recognized. The idea of getting rid of Jeanette, and, and where she could have been here for three months, and we could have gotten her to do what we needed her to do, looks very good right now. So we had no transition. And that's why we're in the mess that we're in right now. And it is a mess. That's and I'm ashamed right. of it. That's right. I think <clears throat> that it's certainly a situation that no one's a fan of, not having a CFO, and the challenges that we've got, we've had in trying to acquire one, trying to keep one, and in all reality, for all of the parts of that that don't look good, it is to be said that as a small town, much like in a lot of things, there's bigger money bigger benefits, uh, there's a limit to who we can bring in, who seems to be applying for the jobs. I've heard repeatedly in my short tenure that there is a shortage of certified CFOs. Um, and I've heard that internally from people in town. I also went to one of the, one of the trainings where I met a lot of people uh, and spoke with uh, some BAs and some CFOs. And that does seem to be a realistic concern in New Jersey. There are just not a lot of these people. With that, our struggle is uphill on a good day. We simply don't have the resources to pay big money to some people or to accommodate on some levels. Makes things harder. Uh, I have to agree that I would feel better having a CFO. I'd feel better having a budget. I'd like to move on to some things that we can do for the town, and this has come up repeatedly. I wish there was a better way. We would, you know, we're working on it. If we can get the right people, I think we certainly, you know, we would certainly all agree to hire. The, I don't want to deal into the, the details of the other contract, because sometimes I think, uh, 
I don't think it was that bad of a deal. But I do think that it's awkward to, in the conversation of it, to go back to North Brunswick and say, we want more because we did this. It was just late to bring that up. It much easier to, to have done that a couple of years ago, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't help us today. I do think that we need to maybe get a little more, when we do get resumes, when we do get some of these, we do get applicants. It maybe needs to be handled in a more transparent fashion and perhaps done in a more timely manner. Uh, anything that we're gonna do in that negotiation, uh, you know, if, if the finance committee or the personnel committee, maybe we all need to loop in on it. But it certainly seems that for the benefit of the town, we gotta find a practice and we have to refine our practices. I will say that, again, I paid a lot more attention over the last few years than I ever did in the previous nine or so that I lived here. But it seems that hiring practices in this town have been problematic on several levels, not just in these four months, but going back and it just seems historically that seems to be a problem that I've seen or heard of more accurately. Um, and I don't know if that's our process as a town, if it's simply a smaller personnel committee um, that, you know, that makes that a problem or how, however that process is being handled, it seems like it's been stated over the years that it may not be Milltown's strongest suit. So what you're saying is that when you have a good employee, a valued employee, like, like a full-time BA and a part-time CO, like we had, you don't just automatically terminate them on the second day of the year because of political reasons or because someone doesn't like them. Because that's, what, that's why we are where we are right now. And we're looking for CFO number four. Well, and as much as I understand your statement, I will say that a person's performance is subjective. Um, and the evaluation of it, I, I personally heard both sides of performance. Um, I heard, you know, certain things were done well, certain things did not seem to be. Because you came to so many meetings during the year. Um, actually, even when she was hired, I know she stepped into what I would say is not a great situation. Mm. There was certainly some transition that didn't seem to have enough overlap, right. which I think has been, again, an ongoing issue in 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 Milltown. And I'm not, I'm, you know, you notice I'm saying it's a Milltown thing. It's been a while. I don't think that. I just think that we need to try and make some changes into the way we're doing things, and like, like that's keep, us. Like keeping valued employees instead of just letting them go. Well, I think valued employees is, again, subjective, <coughs> and performance is performance. And there are certainly plenty of times in this, in this state, in everywhere, where transition occurs. Um, you know, again, I can see where, I can see where you're going with it. And I'm not trying to diminish what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I realize too that probably being on the finance committee, your perception of performance in that issue may be different than other people's. You mean like getting things done? You mean like hitting a deadline? You mean I like keeping we, tax rates below 2%? You mean you know, like using $350,000 of COVID money to balance the water sewer budget when that money wasn't going to come in the next year? And you knew it. I can't like wait. Like signing a deal with New Brunswick I that includes wait. a three percent increase I can't every wait. year in the water and sewer rates. I can't wait to see your budget. Well, but part of the issues that that I think were implied in performance in that matter you're just speaking of is that over the last few years, I believe it's every year, New Brunswick increases their rate, their water rate by three and a half percent. But that. 
never seem to get addressed. Well, again, and, and again like, that just pulls just money like, out of the budget. Just like Councilman that, Malinsky just said. But that creates a deficit. Just like Councilman so Malinsky just the, said, the, I, I don't think you just heard him, that there was this thing called COVID, where you couldn't raise anybody's rate at all. But they raised Period. ours? Now they've raised it, but not at that time. So what did we do to address that last year when those rates came in? Anything? I don't know. I think we should have. You know what we should have done? No, we're going to use it for political kind of. No, time. no. We should have. We should have uh, sold the water and sewer utility. That's what we should have done. Would have been a great idea. Yes. Have someone else pay the twenty million dollars for a force main. Yes. That would cost us a million dollars a yes. year. Yes. Okay. We know we're all at here, and no one agrees. Where do we go from here? Because that's the next conversation. Is where do we go from here? Well, I think we all got to work together and solve this problem. That's what I think. That's what the people put us here is to do the best interest of the residents. And this, we, this isn't we, about we, us. Right. It's about the people in town. We got. We all got voted right. in because people trusted us. Exactly. And we can't break that trust. Exactly. And you also have to earn their respect. Right. And that's where we go from here. So whatever disagreements we're having now should end, and we just start new right now. Because the cat's yeah. out of the bag. People know what's going on. Well, hopefully we get some new resumes coming in soon enough and we can have some uh, interviews for these CFOs and get someone on board and start developing our budget. And I do think that, you know, if we get new applicants, we need to look at it. We look, need to look at the pay scale. And, and I'm trying to do things, to say things in a tactful manner, but I do think sometimes as much as if that deal was less than perfect, Again, if we need to do things, uh, there have been a lot of less than perfects that have happened over the years. And sometimes you can take that CFO and, again, if it doesn't work, you can address it later. But we have none. We had a chance to have one. And that really would have, uh, it seems in some ways, that may have been the, a good decision. Council President, that job posting that I emailed you earlier today, that's okay to post again? I didn't hear back. Yeah, CFO. The part-time CFO job posting said, I sent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One last thing I'd like to make it soon before, uh, just so we don't leave this all on a little sugar with all the bitter that's, uh, that's come forth. It does seem that uh, the commendations in the police force, it's have repetitive names. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, uh, I just wanted to say that, that that's a good thing. Absolutely. We can agree on something. <laughs> agree on a lot of things. We just get it done. We do. And yeah, next is Mayor's comments. Uh, Ms. Orlando, um, I had gotten, uh, received a call again about the 2024 ordinances still aren't up on the borough website. Newsbook. They are on the website, so I'm not They're sure not who's saying they are. Front page of the website. If you can please just follow up on they that. They were, okay. They're on. Okay. Um, Saturday, That's April 13th at 12 noon is Little League opening for Milltown Little League. I uh, hope to see everyone there. And um, I also had a comment about um, what we were discussing about with the shared service. Uh, Councilman Potter and uh, Mr. Carr, uh, both of were on that um, since the beginning of March um, because the communications were clearly across both of that. Um, Mr. Carr, you were involved with the uh, North Brunswick with the financial portions of it and uh, the communications between Mr. Carr, Mr. Potter, Mr. Council President Brevlinski and myself are all throughout the month. Um, so it's kind of a, a moot point now, but there was communications going throughout the month. But not agreement, Mr. Mayor. So I think we should really okay. just you move on. Comments? We should just move on. From you had your comments? Mr. I uh, did. My I, comments. Asked my, I asked my comments in the meeting. They weren't addressed, and I voted the way it's I voted. my comments so. now, please. Okay. Um, Agenda session. Next on the agenda, we have this items for discussion for April 29th, 2024 meeting. Ordinance, public hearing, second reading, ordinance, renaming Landy Lane to Paul W. Kohler Lane in Milltown. All right, any questions? 
No? Okay, adjournment. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Councilman Collins, seconded by Councilman President Rebowinski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you.